Um, some of the ways we can look at uh, trying to understand who astroviolages are is collecting a couple points of data on them. The first is academic age. Academic age is traditionally defined as the year in which a person publishes their first paper in a peer-reviewed journal. For my purposes, couldn't use that. So I looked at the year in which a person got their PhD. Next is what discipline do they come from? The easiest way to do that for me was to look at what field they say their dissertation's in. And the last is, do they continue to participate in astrobiology? Meaning, when someone says they're an astrobiologist, do they keep on being an astrobiologist or do they give up and go on to a different discipline? And are there new people coming into the field? Now, um, for purposes of my study, it was difficult to find astrobiologists in the wild <laughs> because they're spread across a lot of different diverse disciplines, right? So the easiest way to do that was to let them self-select and look at who shows up to AbSciCon. So I randomly selected the presenters of AbSciCon 2002 to, through 2012. Then I figured out when they got their PhD and what field they got it in. This is the distribution of fields that people got their PhDs in. Now the important thing to look at here is you have a few core disciplines on the far left that are, a lot of people were in. And then you have a whole bunch where there was only one person in all of those. This is a measure of multidisciplinarity. And the question is, how much is good for astrobiology to continue growing? And then is there a point at which you get too much and the field fractures? Like, do some of these people team up with some of the other ones and then you end up with two different things of astrobiology, right? Now the exact breakdown looks like this. You have a couple weird ones up there that I don't fully understand, like neuroscience. Um, I get paleobiology and, you know, geology and chemistry, those were the two biggest. Um, genetics, yeah. But it was also difficult because it's hard to come up with an ontology or a taxonomy for science because some of these are clearly related but you, it's hard to like mush them together into larger categories, right? So now we're going to talk about academic age. So what year did the people get their PhD? You have one at 1950, which would be our oldest, and then you have one at two, in the two decades of the 2010s, which makes sense because my data stopped in 2012. So what does a healthy field like astrobiology look like? you'd expect to find people that are older and, and a lot of people that are younger, which is what the data shows. This is the academic age calculated at the time of the conference. And what's interesting at this is that you have a wide distribution, right? If astrobiology wasn't pro progressing very healthily, you would see like a whole bunch of people at the, the bottom, some people at the top, but nobody in the middle, meaning that as people get trained as astrobiologists, they're going up the ranks. They're getting a postdoc and going on to fact, so on and so forth. And then the people with negative numbers for academic age, which is the, sorry, academic age is the blue bars and the orange bars are participation. The people with the negative numbers means they got their uh, PhD after the conference, which is also good because that means that the grad students that showed up progressed on. And you can see the pattern holds for all of the years. Now we're looking at participation. This is the part where we talk about if the field is healthy, people show up at the conference and then keep showing up later on. And then obviously uh, 2000, and each year that I pick is gonna be uh, 20, you know, the full 20. Um, and then it's the following years. So you see this pattern develop here? Where, you know, it, it's pretty strong. People are showing up at uh, pretty good rates. And then you get here, where you get more on the front end, meaning that they showed up in 2008 when I collected their name, and then they, the participation rate was pretty high going on. Then you get this one, same pattern. This one, because uh, it's 2012, you can't really look at it. But what that means is that you have new people coming into the field, and they continue to stay, at least for a few years. Right? This is you guys. <laughs> now, What's the big problem with my study? How do you find an astrobiologist? Obviously, there's a bunch of you here now, but how do you identify them? Because they're in all sorts of different disciplines. 
I can tell you for sure that there's one person up there that's not an astrobiologist, and they're not in the right category. That would be me, education. <laughs> I'm actually an information scientist, like I said. But how many of you think that you would like me to collect data on you and call you a planetary scientist? Or do you think it's something else? Do you have something? Oh, you are a planetary scientist. So we have one, one planetary scientist. Oh, a few, OK? But that's the problem with these sorts of studies, is getting good data on academics because they bounce around and so forth. Um, and also, I guess the question is, how much multidisciplinarity do you guys want in the field? How much do you think is healthy? Is it good that we have this many biologists showing up? Do we need more astronomy people? I mean, what's, what's the mix you're after? Now, obviously, that's not a question that any individual can answer. But when you talk about studying emerging fields, these questions become relevant. I think I got through that quick enough so we can go have beer. But. <laughs> questions? Questions? <laughs> So you were studying EBSCICON, which obviously is an American-based conference. How much do you think your data would have been affected by people who may have attended for a, a couple of times because they were studying in the US and then stopped attending because they had to come back to the US to attend, like by the, the presence of an international community? A lot, but because there was no uh, good methodology that I could come up with. That was, the, frankly, the best I could do. And the data is not perfect. It's far from, but that was as close as I could get. Uh, so I noticed that there, you pointed out that there are a couple of spikes and things like that in your, in your graphs, um, but how much of it do you think is related to how much funding we're getting for doing astrobiology <laughs> research, or have you not looked into that yet? Well, I think a lot of these spikes, like these ones, are probably related to the size of the conference, but, and it's probably related to how much funding people are getting, but uh, that would be an interesting data point I could try to pull out. It's the levels of funding. Yeah. The title of your talk was Health and Robustness of Our Field. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I missed it. Did you give us an answer? <laughs> well, and I, just let me follow up on that. I was wondering if you'd done similar evaluations of other emerging fields that would help us get an idea of, you know, are we robust and healthy or decrepit? The d well, <laughs> Okay, so the data so far, many of the years for a academic age and participation show that there are people at all three sort of levels, right? So you have grad students, uh, people sort of mid-career, and people later in the career. That's good because it indicates the likelihood that people that are grad students have the opportunity to pursue this way. It also means that people that it were around before there was much of a notion of astrobiology are coming into the field. So you're getting a good mix of ages, which is good for a healthy field. An unhealthy field would, would, would be where you have a lot of people at this end and a lot of people at this end, indicating that the people at the, the younger people are unable to get jobs in the field. And there's a bunch of, basically there's a bunch of grad students working for a bunch of old farts. <laughs> that would be unhealthy. And the fact that they keep showing up to the conferences also indicates a level of interest and participation in the field. Are you going to compare that with uh, the astrobiology conference in Europe? Uh, well, probably not, because the next phase of this research is to pick another discipline, probably one that's like, how do you say, uh, more well-developed along the lines, like it's been around for a lot longer, and then to see if they have a similar pattern or a different pattern. Because I can't really talk about, uh, you know, do a lot of strong conclusions until I get more data from other things. Any other questions? Oh, one more. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if your um, your data can can give an answer to that. But did you get an idea how multidisciplinary the field really is? I mean, are people like really just presenting projects from their particular field, or how many of the projects are actually combination of different fields? 
did you get an idea about that? Well, that's actually an incredibly difficult question to answer, because just reading the titles and abstracts, it's hard to place what uh, field the person's presenting it. The only thing I could really do is let them tell me what their field was. Uh, and I did that by looking at their CVs and also, well, digging through a lot of different databases, but primarily CVs. So if somebody said, I graduated with a PhD in chemistry, I said, OK, put you on there for chemistry. But it was almost impossible to do it from abstracts. Well, difficult. OK, great talk. Thank you.